So this next lesson is about this term here, and this term is redox, uh, and this comes from a topic within um, the unit two half of the chemistry AS specification. Now the starting point really for this is uh, the term redox and what that actually means. Um, what we can do is we can break that down into read and ox. Now the read part stands for reduction and the ox part stands for oxidation. Now these may be terms that you've heard before but they may not. Now oxidation you should have done within reactions or fuels for example adding oxygen is the classic way to think of that. However we're going to look at it in a slightly different way um, and that's in terms of oil rig. Now oil rig is an acronym that tells us exactly what reduction and oxidation are actually showing. Um, now the oil part is telling us that oxidation is loss and in the rig part we have reduction is the complete opposite than oxidation and reduction is gain. Now in both portions of this we have this talking about electrons. So that means in an exam situation you're asked what is oxidation straight away oxidation is loss of electrons what is reduction reduction is gain of electrons when we actually look at the terms oxidation reduction we have to look at some terms called oxidation states or oxidation numbers and these are just numbers that are given to elements um, that actually tell us the number of electrons that have either been gained or lost depending on whether oxidation or reduction has taken a place um, by that particular element so we're going to have a little look at those now. What I have here is a list of various elements. I'm going from uncombined, looking at particular groups, individual elements, um, and then what their oxidation states. So these numbers that would be applied to each individual one that we've actually got on this table on the left-hand side. Um, now some of these um, are always true. Some of them have slight exceptions. And really the exceptions come um, at this sort of bottom end here where we have the rest of group seven hydrogen and oxygen um, yet they are only very sort of very small numbers of exceptions the rest of these stand true all the time now uncombined elements are always given an oxidation state of zero so if we were to see sodium on its own na we would say oh, oxidation state is zero so group one metals they are always given an oxidation state of plus one Group 2 metals are always given oxidation state of plus 2. Aluminium, being in the third group, is given oxidation state of plus 3. Fluorine, always minus 1. The rest of group 7 is always given minus 1, but the exceptions can be if they are bonded with fluorine also present, where they would actually then take on a plus 1 um, oxidation state. Hydrogen is always plus 1. The exception here being that um, hydrogen in the form of a metal hydride. So sodium hydride, for example, we would find that sodium has a plus one. As we've said, it always has the plus one. Hydrogen in this case would have minus one. And I explain, this will become more apparent what's happening here in, in just a moment's time. Um, oxygen, finally, minus two is always it, except for in the case of hydrogen peroxide, where we have hydrogen in this case trumping the oxygen with plus one oxygen however drops down and we end up with minus one there rather than the minus two that it normally has the only other ones you would find here um, that don't fit necessarily into this rule packet would be things like transition metals where you might see something like iron two stated now that two in roman numerals there is actually dictating the oxidation state of the iron so within a compound we know that, that iron would always exist as plus two we might see something like um, chromium three and in this case the chromium would exist in the plus three state whether that be as an iron or whether that be within the compound uh, what we're going to look at now is actually how this works and how you can get to some of these numbers so this next portion here um, I'm going to look at actually how we can can work out individual oxidation states depending on the compound that we're given um, so one that it is maybe more straightforward because of the fact that we know from our rules that both the oxidation states in a compound such as hydrogen chloride um, if we take if we knew hydrogen was plus one but we did not know what chlorine was we could work it out and the way that we do that is when we have compounds when we add together the oxidation states of the individual elements we find that they will total the charge on that over that compound so the case of hydrogen chloride charge here zero there's nothing there so therefore we know that if plus one add 
x here is equal to 0, then x, which is obviously the oxidation state of chlorine, must be minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, equals 0. Bearing that in mind, I'm now going to give you some examples to do, and then we'll run through those and see how you've got on. Okay, so here's some examples. So for each of these, um, I want you to work out the oxidation state of the named element within the compound. So I'd guess pause now and have a go at doing those. Okay, so if this first one, again, charge overall here of zero, we know the hydrogen is plus one, so work that out here, two times plus one, add into that this unknown sulfur oxidation state, um, and obviously add to that four times our known oxygen being minus two, and that will come to zero, because we know that the charge overall here is zero, because there is no charge actually given. When we add this through, we should find, therefore, that sulphur equals plus 6. So nitrogen in potassium nitrate work out in a similar way. We know that plus 1 for the potassium, so plus 1. We add that to our unknown nitrogen oxidation state, and then finally we add that to 3 times the minus 2 present. And we know that's got to equal 0 in total, because there's no charge again. 4, nitrogen must be plus 5 in this case. Manganese, one more, plus one, unknown manganese, four times minus two, equals zero, no charge, therefore manganese must equals plus seven. Chromium in potassium dichromate, two times plus one, add to two times our unknown, add to that seven times minus two. And what we come out with, again equal to zero, is each chromium is equal to plus six. The last two are slightly different in that we actually have charged compounds here. The first one, no different um, in terms of the hydrogen. Hydrogen is plus one each time. Oh, ignore that. Um, four times plus one. And this time we know it must equal a total of plus one. Therefore, the nitrogen must equal minus 3. Final one, copper in the copper chloride complex here. Again, unknown, add 2 times minus 1 from our rules before, equaling now minus 1. Therefore, copper must equal plus 1 as its oxidation state. If we're dealing with individual ions, it's at this point so something like... Na plus, that would also have an oxidation state of plus one. Or again, an ion such as the sulfate ion, we would find that has an oxidation state of two minus in total. And again, we could work out the sulfur from that, working it back, knowing the oxygens. Okay, so the next stage is to actually look at reactions and, and to build the idea of the redox occurring, the reduction in oxidation reactions where we can actually see oxidation numbers changing as the reduction occurs and as the oxidation occurs. So we'll have a look at that now. Reduction reactions and oxidation reactions both involve a change of the oxidation state, of the oxidation number. Let's look at some examples. We'll look at one reaction where oxidation is taking place. We'll look at a reaction where reduction is taking place too. Now, in terms of the oxidation reaction here, we're going to look at half equations. And half equations are equations that show only oxidation or reduction taking place. If we have an equation where reduction and oxidation are both taking place together, we would class that as a redox equation. So the oxidation reaction I'm going to look at is the one here where the iron 2 plus ion becomes the iron 3 plus ion. Now we know this is oxidation because the oxidation state here has gone from plus 2 to plus 3. So if that number increases, we have an oxidation occurring. Now in terms of actually what we've got written here, this is a half equation, but it isn't balanced. It shows the iron 2 plus becoming the iron 3 plus, but it just doesn't work. Because although we have the same number of ions here, we actually have a different charge. So the way that we can balance this is we can say, well actually what's happening to the iron 2 plus in order to make it into iron 3 plus? Now we know that it's losing an electron. For the sake of convention, that isn't actually what we would write. We would switch that over to the other side and we would say that the electron is going to be over here. And so get rid of this. Now 
we have the iron 2 plus becoming the iron 3 plus plus an electron. So it's the exact same as if we had the minus electron here. We've just switched over to the side. And actually, if we look now, the charge is equal. 2 plus on this side, and now 2 plus in total on this side. To look at a slightly more difficult one um, that involves reduction occurring, we'll take the dichromate ion and we'll reduce that to the chromium 3 plus ion. In this case, we know that 3 plus for the chromium ion here, it's oxidation state. Easy to get that because we've got the charge. This one we'd have to work it out. Um, we've got minus 14 here, minus 2 in total, therefore we know that each chromium would be plus 6. And just as oxidation involved the number, the oxidation number going up, here we have it going down, so from plus 6 to plus 3. In terms of this, we have a much more difficult equation um, in that not only do we have charges different, we actually have different things present. Now the first stage is always to balance the thing that is being oxidized or reduced. So in our case, the chromium. So we've got two here, we've got one here. Balance it with a two. The next problem is that we have seven oxygens present on this side, but we have none on this side, which just doesn't work at the minute. Now the way we always balance oxygens is we add water. So in this case, we're going to add seven water. Seven oxygens there, seven oxygens there. It's really good. Happy with that. But in doing so, we've now brought in some hydrogens. So we balance those using H plus ions. And in this case, we would have 14 H plus ions added to that side. So chromiums are balanced, oxygens are balanced, and hydrogens are balanced. But back to, as in this example, the charges are not balanced. On this side, in total, we are going to have 14 here, minus 2, so we have plus 12 in terms of our charge. On this side, we have plus 6. Remember that each one of these chromiums gives us 3, plus 3, and we've got two of those. The way to balance that exactly as with this one is we add electrons, in this case, plus 6. So we now have balanced charges. And again, this actually, if you look at both of these, they follow the definitions of oxidation and reduction. Oxidation loss of electrons, let me put on the other side, reduction here being the gain of electrons. Now what we can actually do is we can combine half equations to give us a total redox equation. And in this case, we can combine these two to give us a redox reaction where we have both reduction and oxidation occurring. So, what we find though is that if we were to just put these together, we would have an imbalance of electrons, which means actually the reaction won't work because what happens is one element is just transferring electrons really to, to the other to allow for the oxidation and reduction to take place. Therefore, we have to find a common multiple between our two, um, our, two, our two half equations. So in this case, we have one electron here and six here. The easiest way to balance this up is to multiply this side by six. That, of course, is going to give us our six electrons, which will cancel out. But it also means we have six iron 2 plus ions and six iron 3 plus ions. In terms of putting these together, it's very, very straightforward. We literally just add each side. So imagine this is an imaginary line drawn down there. We put all of these on the same reactant side, all of these on the same product side. So to write this out in its full way, we would have 6 Fe2+, plus, add 14 H+, plus, add Cr2, O7, 2 minus, add 6 electrons, going to 6 Fe3+, plus, 6 electrons, 2 chromium 3 plus ions and 7 water molecules. What we next can do is we can actually cancel off these electrons. It's not necessary to actually have those in the final redox cancelled out, but make sure that if you do put them in, you find it easier to actually get your head around the whole thing, that you actually do cancel those out. Otherwise, you are going to have an issue when the equation isn't simplified. The final point to look at really is if we take this redox equation and we'll just move this down. If we look at this in terms of actually what's happening, so again, we know that we have reduction occurring here. And we know that we have oxidation occurring here. So that shouldn't be anything new, because that's obviously what we've spent so far talking about. Yeah, there are a couple of new other terms we can look at, and those are the terms oxidizing agent 
and the term reducing agent. Now, as the name implies, an oxidizing agent oxidizes something and a reducing agent does the opposite, it reduces something. So what we could look at in terms of this equation here, I could say that this this thing here, my dichromate ion, it has actually oxidized my iron 2 plus ion to iron 3 plus. And you could look at the other way around, you could say that actually we have therefore this this species here, the iron 2 plus ion, is reducing the dichromate, or particularly the chromium part of it, down into the chromium 3 plus. Now what you'll notice is though, if we take this one for example, the dichromate ion, it is oxidizing the iron 2 plus ion, but in doing so, it is itself reduced. And the same is true of the iron 2 plus. So it is causing this to be reduced, but it is itself being oxidized. So oxidizing agent oxidizes something and is reduced and a reducing agent reduces something and in turn is oxidized.